Listen up, everybody. It's time for the Valley Cast. My wife thinks you're doing something else. Don't feel like watching movies, so I'll watch people guess them instead. I don't know how it goes. I think it starts with your <laughs> guys, welcome to the Valley Cast. Uh, it's early, guys. Last night I had a, uh, I did a movie wanna show. It's a show I do. That live. was last night. That was last night. No, I thought it was tonight. Listen, Kevin, the next show is July nineteenth, and we're gonna have Harley from Epic Meal Time. Oh boy, oh, boy. And, uh, I okay, is that a Saturday? I think that one's a Friday. I, I'm not I just. Here. I'm not your marketing team, but I would suggest maybe using wacky in your promotional material. Mm, wacky. This one's going to be a wacky affair. Oh, that's fun. Wacky. You like that? Wacky's good. You're pretty yeah. wacky, Steve. I don't know if you knew that. I am a little wacky. I think I but am. the three of you together, that's like exponentially wacky. There was another. It's triple X oh. wacky. I saw a trailer for some really bizarre Japanese movie. And, you know, I'm always on the lookout for like weird, bizarre shit. This is tangential from what I was just saying, but I appreciate a good wacky tangent. Uh, but I, they, there was a quote from this person who posted a clip of this like wacky Japanese movie and said the movie one that this movie is a quote, Anti-predictable mind fuck that goes to untold levels of wackadoo. <laughs> wackadoo. Which Back. is like, I don't think a sentence huh. has ever gripped me so huh. provocatively. Yeah, that is some great wordplay. What was That's, the first thing you said? Anti-predictable? Anti-predictable. <laughs> wow. Not just not predictable, but no, anti. all predictability. <laughs> it's like impossible to predict. <laughs> It is so unpredictable that it does not want predictability in any other film. That's all I want. That's kind of all I want in my films is to is it for it to be not predictable. These days, yeah, yeah, especially with the uh, the West. But I've talked about this before. Like over in the West, here we got our hero arc. We got our Joseph Campbell hero stories. We got our beginning. Yeah, our ends. hero's journey. And we're just used to it. But then you start watching Eastern Fair. This is why I think animes are so like good to us and mess with our brains a little bit. Even Jimmy films, it's like then it's not the same. It's a, it takes so many the, yeah. left and right turns that our dumb brains aren't used. Which I love. I love that a lot. I love when we when you break the uh, normal conventions of filmmaking rules. Mm -hmm. That's why I love Yorgos Lanthimos a lot because. Yeah. Those are anti-predictable movies. Like, you couldn't have predicted. I still need to see Poor Things. Oh, Kevin. I know. I'm ready for it. Come on, man. It's a good one, man. Emma My Stone. bunny's freaking the hell out right now. What do you think's going on? There's so much thumping going on. I can't believe you guys can't hear it. Is that what that was? <laughs> I thought it was construction. No. <laughs> She's, like, terrified of something right now. Do you think she is? <laughs> Look, did oh. you see that? <laughs> Do you think she's you think sensing an earthquake? I mean, no, I look, hope look not. What, look what she's staring at. There is a ghost over there. <laughs> Wait, keep the camera on it because I want to see. There's a bunny ghost. I think okay. she got mad at me or something, and now she just wants me to leave. Oh, she's giving you the she's giving you the cold shoulder, cold bunny I shoulder. I think she totally is. Oh, because she's like this laughter sound at this yeah, talking it was, sound. Oh, oh, there was one. Ooh. There we you go. See that? Maybe it's the sounds we're making. That that the maybe they don't understand. Can you can they can't they, hear you? They can't hear that. No, hmm. but I don't know what's up with her, dude. Keep going. Let me make that sure. Rabbit, wait, that rabbit was freaking out while Joe was talking. Joe, talk. Okay. Yo, bunny, come get it. You want this? <laughs> <laughs> How about instead of a buddy cop movie, we do a bunny cop? <laughs> It's actually pretty funny. <laughs> Dude, we could get a second rate animation company to make that movie <laughs> and just call it Bunny Cop. Bunny oh. Cop. <laughs> it's, the, <laughs> it's the Bunny Cop movie of the year. Oh my God. Dude, she's so mad. <laughs> Why? What's happening? I don't know. She's so mad at me right now. <laughs> she's because so mad. Is she, is, what is she going to do? 
What if, like, in during the podcast, someone in a bunny <laughs> costume came up behind Kevin with a knife? <laughs> They're like, oh, no, Kevin's bunny. Dude, that's what it feels like right now. Look at this shit. She going to get me. Oh, my God. Look at her staring at you. Oh, yeah, dude. She's not liking you at all right now. It's because I was too loud. Get that bunny out of here. Let's you know? kick her. <laughs> guys, hold for bunny. So anyway, uh, I did love that line, untold levels of wackadoo, because, and that's all I'm looking for is movies of untold levels of wackadoo. Untold, um, so much wackadoo that they didn't tell anybody about. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so I'm really that I found that line to be great. But anyway, so that was the tangent. So Wait, did you watch the movie? Was it untold? No, no, we're coming. We're coming for it. <laughs> we're coming for it. What does that mean? I want to see <laughs> that, that like, <laughs> part of that that review. <laughs> can, you imagine, can you imagine being like, did you, did your friend asked you, did you see Furiosa? No, 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 but I'm coming for it. <laughs> <laughs> like a bunny to Kevin, I'm coming. Like a, yeah, I got my sights on it. Anyway, so last night we did movie Wana. And uh, they, uh, when we do movie wanna, it's usually like a pretty, pretty um, lit up room. It's like a hot boxed venue that where we're all watching a movie and it's bonkers and whatever. And everybody but, is just token the whole time. Everyone's right? token the whole time. It's just joints being lit up and vapes being smoked. There's just like a smoky room. Even if you're not smoking, you're getting high. You're good. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like I had a friend who who showed up and I was like, did you imbibe? And she was like, no, 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 I don't. I, I was drinking a little bit and, uh, and I actually had a had some mushrooms actually earlier. And I was like, whoa, that's tight. <laughs> and she was like, yeah, I can't really smoke because it, it kind of fucks me up. makes me really paranoid and shit. I was like, oh, well, you're probably, you're, yeah, you're probably high because this room was, this was after the show too. I was like, this was a very hot boxed room. Uh, and, and it does, even if you didn't plan on getting high, you should plan on getting high if you ever come to one of these things. It's really is fun. Is the doors or windows open at all, or is it just a Doors open, closer? yeah. Okay. The doors open. And, uh, you know, we encourage people to go outside and take a break. If <laughs> take too a much breather. Inside. Take <laughs> a breather. But anyway, uh, but uh, last night we had uh, some, we had some, uh, oh, what is this? <laughs> Is it honey? Oh, he's putting honey in some tea or something. Dude, is that, this is a – we need video people sensory, for this one. Yeah. It's a very sensory – it's a sensory episode. Was that tea, honey in your tea? It was. Put some sugar in your water, honey in your tea. I did. But don't uh, in my water. Anyway, so, um, so last night – so and sometimes when we do the show, there's like sponsors – there's like weed, marijuana, paraphernalia sponsors that are like in the room with us. Okay, okay. And they're giving away free joints and all sorts of stuff. And all you got to do is go back there during the movie and they'll give you free shit. It's really cool. It's a really awesome event. And last night we had uh, this person making popcorn. In, uh, <laughs> they called it medicated popcorn. <laughs> What? <laughs> I've never that term is so insane. <laughs> medicated popcorn and medicated cookies. And there was like okay. a little there was a little oven that they had set up and they were like and by the way, la- yesterday was like one of the hottest days in the valley. Yeah. It was hot. Felt yeah. that. Uh it was like it was like eighty five degrees at seven o'clock at night. And I fucking, it's awful. Here comes the summer. I hate it. And so this, they turn on this fucking oven inside the venue, and it's like, oh, shit. And the, But they were making cookies, which was wonderful. So anyway, the point I'm they trying to make is. Popcorn. They should have. They should have called it popcorn. Shit. I didn't even. Are you me? Damn, that's so good, Joe. Wait, did it look like regular popcorn? Yeah, it and it was some sprinkles so on it. good. It was so good. It was like buttery, and it didn't taste like it was medicated. Popcorn, but they brought it to you in this little cup, and they're they when they hand you the cup, they're like, "This is twenty five milligrams." This whole oh cup. God. I'm like, Just "Fuck yeah!" And I scarfed it the fuck down, dude. Up <laughs> popcorn. Popcorn, popcorn. popcorn is dangerous. It's so dangerous. Just, yeah, and it yeah. was so t- 
tasty, dude. It was so tasty. And so I'm like fucking shovel this 25 milligram popcorn. And uh, and I'm we're movies on and it was a good crowd last night. It was pretty packed house, and I'm like in the microphone going like everybody should know it's 25 milligrams per little popcorn cup. So be careful. <laughs> and then uh, and then like 10 minutes later, uh, ding! Oh, the cookies are ready. And then they they start bringing around these fucking fresh baked, right oh, out of God. the oven cookies and. I'm like, how many milligrams are the cookies? <laughs> <laughs> like, um, fifteen, like 10, 10 milligrams. That's a that alone. You literally destroy me. You obliterated. And I just went go, <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and then I was like in the mic. I was like. Okay, so if the popcorn's 25 and the cookie's 10 and then you th- and I just started like I just hey. imagine the entire crowd also just be like eh, oh. the same time. <laughs> trying to do the math. Yeah. Like, Please keep your math uh, straight with all this week. But anyway, so I was zooted, my boys. Mm-hmm. I was absolutely on mars and <laughs> but were uh, you okay yeah i was fine i just okay. was so <laughs> fucked up and i was like to my girlfriend i was like i think you need to drive us home <laughs> 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 and uh, she's like okay and dude when we got home i was up until like 1 a.m so fucking hot yeah, how could yeah. you go to sleep and yeah. I honestly think I might still be a little high. Oh, I bet, dude. <laughs> so if I'm it like, was edibles, yeah. But it was dude. like, it wasn't scary. It wasn't overwhelming. That's and good. It could have, though, because it was lasting a long time. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was, so anyway, that was my night, Joe. I was just like eating edibles like nothing. Like, I got this. And then I get home and I'm like, I need pizza at 12 <laughs> o'clock <laughs> at night. I need Dreams pizza. come true, my friend. It was great. Yeah. It was such a fun show. And you I watched two movies or one? We have three choices of uh, movies. Okay. And uh, we let the audience decide. And since Katie, our guest, was uh, she deals in food-related create content Ooh. creation, we uh, we decided to choose food related movies. So one of the movies was Food Fight, which I'm going to show you the trailer for uh, in just a minute here. <clears throat> and then the other movie was, and they're all obscure movies. They they've got to be, yeah, because we really want people to be like, I don't know what the fuck we're about More to we're watch. Watching. You know, and I that's the goal. You know, is really to be like, and also we're not trying to do like super well known stuff and then potentially get in trouble. Trouble, for, <laughs> yeah. You know? So is that your rabbit still freaking out over there? Dude, she hasn't stopped. I think I'm going to move. Cause it's like, really? She's, and I don't want, I want, I think she's like genuinely scared of me right now. Oh. <laughs> and she never is. Well, put your well, pants not back like on. this. Freaking out. Like, keep going. Wow. That's crazy. All right. Well, anyway, uh, and then another movie was called uh, Refrigerator. Which was like a horror, <laughs> like an 80s horror movie. Okay. And it's about a killer refrigerator. And then the other one was called Microwave, about a killer <laughs> microwave. <laughs> oh, and uh, that microwave movie is, Matt and I kind of watched, we try to skim through some of the choices before we like present them uh-huh. a few weeks before the show or a week before the show or whatever. And they're really horny movies. They're like inappropriate, horny movies. You remember those movies, Joe? Dude, every movie was a horny movie from the 80s to like 93. Yeah, it was like, here's some boobs for zero reason. Yep, sex scene that just we don't need to watch. It, it didn't matter. It, it, and also, like, audiences were like, okay. Like, audiences didn't need to know why we were seeing boobs. Yep. Now we need to know why we're seeing boobs. I could be like, I think one out of every five movies back then, like a shirt would just get ripped off by like a mechanical accident. Yeah, and they'd be like, oh, God. Remember in in Weird Science? Holy shit, you have a Marine behind you. (laughs) (laughs) Someone from Desert Storm is in your Dude, she's she's fine now. The second I left, she's back to normal. There you go. She wanted you out. pissed. (laughs) 
She wants you out of there. Wears the pants in the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, remember? It, is it, there's you guys have seen Weird Science? Yep. Kevin, you've seen Weird Science. Things start just flying out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Kevin, you haven't seen Weird Science? No, I haven't. Damn, dude. Yeah, all right. Well, anyway, that that movie's pretty great, and you and kind of PG thirteen, really, right? Wouldn't you oh, say? Yeah. I mean, but then it, <laughs> for some stupid random reason in the like it like towards in the third act of the movie there's this like scene where you see this girl's boobs and you're like whoa boobs like all the way well things are getting like so the context is is that it's a very magical sci-fi movie and everything's getting like sucked out of the chimney in this house and it's like flying out it's like in reverse they're cleaning shit okay. up like that it's and a big scene stuff go and then her there's just this random girl sitting there and all of a sudden her whole dress <laughs> rips off and then she starts to fly and then she gets sucked up and thrown out and just but bo- yeah full boobs full frontal boobs and you're Dang, just like that's you crazy. know i'm not you're not mad about it you're not mad, of course no not. mad about they, it that was their like <laughs> satiation point of like look we know the whole movie you've been waiting to see kelly lebrock make <laughs> i know they yeah, never did they never show so they're just like here's some random boobs that must have been could you imagine the toxicity of our city of our city of our city <laughs> when <laughs> that movie came out and people and bros were like bro this movie because the movie's about two teenage boys creating a woman on their computer you see i knew that premise one. what's that joe you guys should watch weird science at your next movie one. Oh my god dude i mean it is just such a classic fucking movie like it, and i don't i don't hate it like there's some weird pacing well, issues I love it. and that fucking guy that that supporting guy with with uh michael anthony michael hall that guy fucking sucks like in oh. real life no, he just he's a oh, as an actor. actor. <laughs> That's not great. He's one of so... Robert Downey Jr.'s first films. Dude, and fucking Bill Paxton plays Damn. a bully who's so good. And Kelly LeBrock fucking steals the whole movie. Yep. The whole thing and, is great. And it's it's a good reminder of not only was there nudity in every movie back in the eighties, <laughs> yeah. but it was almost like always problematic like we did not occur like, it didn't occur to many people watching that a lot of these high school and like they're children it's like this is a shower scene with children yeah <laughs> and, and that was the thing it was like they are we're, we're watching teenagers we're meant to be watching teenagers the movie yeah. opens with them in the high school gym watching yeah, the girls that's, wow yeah so you're like okay but but the woman they create is a woman is a like adult woman and so you're like, all right, yeah. And then and they're like, the they the reason why they made her was because they wanted to have sex, of course. Yep. And so the whole movie is them like with this robot woman sex. Well, is she a robot? Not a is robot. She? She's just some weird mystical science creature. Magical science yeah. being. Yeah. <laughs> She's a manifested magical being from a computer and you're thinking well when I, if i was a teenage kid i would be i would have sex with that woman mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's the whole point is like you're watching this movie going like i would have sex with this woman and i think how much toxicity and disappointment was there from men that were like uh, they didn't they didn't fuck her it's not real i don't think that's fair steve i think it was from women and men <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, 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 that's a good point, point. That must have been an awakening for a lot of gender. But look, to all of you listening that are not appreciating the premise that we are laying out in front of you, not, it's not just about that. She teaches them to grow up. She teaches them okay. to be men. She teaches them to respect women, and she teaches them how to fuck. Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, like you know, that's – but it feels like a cop-out for – people who are like i just want to see i want to see a fucking shower and and those are the people that really wanted to see a fuck scene from kelly lebrock in that movie but i'll tell you what guys there's something more important than sex and and this movie teaches you about that and what it what is more important than sex is having a, a emotional connection with someone yeah yeah dog hmm. And magic. 
<laughs> okay, so let me show you guys the food fight trailer, and then we can move on from this shit. Okay, you guys ready for this? I yeah. am so ready, dude. So this was the movie they that people chose because we we gave people the option to choose a movie. And Do you remember uh, the other options? Yes, I told Joe already. One of them was called Microwave, and the other one was called Refrigerator, and they're both horror movies about killer <laughs> versions of those things. <laughs> Okay, ready? Here we go. Yeah. You're going to bring me back. Look at that old preview sign. That's so nice. Look at it. Great music. Uh, Magical. Oh, He's dramatic. Oh, boy. He's dramatic. Oh. <laughs> He's the big dog. Dex Dog Detective is back in the house. That always runs to the rescue. <laughs> I still got it. <laughs> Charlie Sheen is Dex. When in doubt, do the right thing. With Hillary Duff. Uh, dude! No. <laughs> that doesn't mean that I couldn't kick your butt. Eva Longoria. I've got a hot case for you. Wayne Brady. I'm Wayne the Brady. Best friend, Daredevil Dan. And Christopher Roy. Somebody ordered a recall. The Super Slick. <laughs> got milk. Do I look oh like Oh my a god. god. Super Slick. Yeah, oh, you! Clean up on aisle one. Is about to tackle. Yo, Dex! They're building an entire army. His biggest case ever. Let's get him. I do have an idea. It's our food. I love this guy. <laughs> it's a battle between the world's most beloved brands and the forces of darkness. Attack! We are one. Watch the tail. Oh, what the fuck? Sorry, Charlie. This is the tuna guy. Starkist. <laughs> this is the tuna guy and the Twinkie it's guy. <laughs> it's our world. It's my life. It's our world. It's my life. It's, life. it's checkout time. Well, just show us the whole movie. Food fight. Okay. Amongst 500 cases you've solved, what's your secret? The secrets in the sound. This is real. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Yeah, that was a real. And this movie. came out in 2012. 2012, 2011, I think maybe. How? Wow. 2012. I, it's not what I remember, but holy! <laughs> you can't even say that they saved enough money to make an appropriate <laughs> logo. I know. Dude. Wow. That's like what people do, like in like 10 minutes doing a pre-visual shot for like another like, cgi this is, movie yeah. this is what the action will look like but not yeah. what the final this is not the final product like. you could literally go hey chat gpt please take yeah. this entire movie and make it better and yeah that's the thing like you're gonna be able to make movies like that real soon <clears throat> That's wild oh, yeah. with chat GPT or AI or some shit. But yeah, we, so everyone chose that movie because it was like the anniversary Dude, of it. That would have freaked me <laughs> it just out. just so happened. Watching <laughs> so we, that. I think we watched 20 minutes of it and the audience is just like, not nah. like, I was like, you guys fucking chose this shit. You have to <laughs> sit with it. And I was like, should we check in on one of the other movies? And everyone was like, yeah, let's go. And yeah. so we put on a different movie. Yeah. <laughs> we did that one was too much. I love in that trailer that was dropped in 2011 or 2012, they said the world's most beloved uh, food mascots. And the only thing they showed <laughs> in the moment was the California raisins that were popular in 1986. Dude, and in that scene, they even play the great, heard it through the grapevine song, which I was like, damn, they like drop money on this fucking thing. Dude. And the cast is crazy. And yeah. it's like, I think they, they were like, the, the original idea was like, this is going to be a huge Pixar fucking hit movie. Because uh, because the whole idea was it was going to be like a Roger Rabbit type movie with all the brands, the brand like mascots. Yeah. And uh, and I think they just like it took forever to make that movie and it was in limbo forever. And uh, I think they recorded all the dialogue with all the celebrities like way in advance or earlier. I can't remember what, what the whole story is, but it's a very interesting story on how they finally released it. And they had to remove a lot of the brands because a lot of the brands were like, no, Backed we don't out. want to do this. Yeah. And that's Ooh. why there's random ones like the Hawaiian punch guy is in it. Yeah. And, uh, 
the Vlasic. Mrs. Just Buttersworth, over. I think I saw yeah, back there. Yeah, Butterworth's in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, clearly, some like a couple producers walked away with a fat payday, and they – sent the rest of the money to the cast so nothing went to the animation right (laughs) exactly it's a horrifying nightmare shit uh anyway joe what do you want to read this message that elliot oh yeah to to the audience oh wait did he just send one no there was one the two that he sent so yesterday i hit you guys up and was like can do the podcast early in the morning or whatever and, uh, and then we were trying to figure out, Elliot was like, unfortunately, I'll be like, getting on a plane, um, but I could do the nighttime or whatever. And he said, but if you guys do the podcast tomorrow morning, I'd ask you to read this statement in my absence. Thank you. Do you see that? Is it the one that starts with to my esteemed colleagues? To my Correct. dear colleagues. Esteemed, I think, is later. Oh, That's the next the, one. Oh, the esteemed one is the one he wants to read. To us. Oh, okay. So to my dear colleagues, I, th- I missed the first one. I can read this. Yes, it'll be yeah, first. Please read that. This is no, two I, audience yeah, yeah. from one Elliot C. Morgan. Correct. Correct. Yes. All right, here we go. <clears throat> to my dear colleagues in our esteemed audience, it is with a heavy heart that I write this letter of apology. On June 12th, I failed to make it. get some backup music? Yeah, I was going to put something kind of somber yeah. or like... Like sad piano music. That, I'll, I will hold for sad piano. Thank you, Joe. Hold for sad piano music. <laughs> and or food fight trailer. <laughs> okay. My dear colleagues and our esteemed audience, it's with a heavy heart that I write this letter of apology. On June 12th, I failed to make the video version of the Valleycast live on YouTube. That's I also true. messed up one of the previous episode's descriptions, but no one seems to have noticed. Or no one cares. Anyways... It's from the bottom of my heart that I say to you now, I am sorry. All throughout my life, I have prided myself on technological prowess. As a young boy, I used to wear rubber gloves and stick my fingers into electrical sockets, believing the rubber would protect me from danger. I would take Sharpies, which my mom always described as the most expensive writing instrument in the world, and color my yellow kitchen gloves black so I could look more like Batman. Mm. kind of genius is rare, and it is a Forwarded me a life of that I am proud of today as a 31 year old man. That must be a typo. It's a 37 year old. Man. I was gonna say what? Bill, <laughs> mistakes happen even to the best of us, and make no mistake, I am the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier today, I gave my first academic talk at a conference in Albuquerque. You might recall Albuquerque as the song title from that last track of Weird Al Yankovic's "Running with Scissors," which was released in 1999. That was a banger. Damn. Or. You may be most familiar with New Mexico from the popular television drama Breaking Bad, starring Ryan Candor and Jesse Austin. (laughs) (laughs) I can say with absolute certainty that this city totally sucks. I cannot wait to get the hell out of here. It is not like Breaking Bad. It is Breaking Bad. I never want to hear any of us denigrate Los Angeles ever again. (laughs) Like not making our most recent podcast episode live, Albuquerque is a mistake. (laughs) <laughs> it's a mistake I soon hope to forget as soon as possible. I even splurged on Southwest's early bird check-in for $25. Yes. <laughs> I'm spot A29. I wish they would have put me in the cockpit because I would turn that plane on myself and drive it back to Los Angeles. I swear to God I would. My academic talk went well, but my joy is tempered by the pain I caused our Valleycast audience. What is the what is the point of impressing 40 academics abroad when I am disappointing 70 listeners at home? It's very <laughs> true. As for my colleagues, while your verbal assault was unwarranted, I cannot blame you for your blood-curdling rage, Steve, your below-the-belt insults, Kevin, yes. or even mm. the spray painting of my mailbox, Jim. <laughs> Although I disagree with much of what was said, I've been getting really into Jordan Peterson lately. <laughs> Personal responsibility is the highest virtue. As you all know, Jordan Peterson is my hero, with Dave Rubin as a close second. Hell yeah. Thank you for turning me on to them, Steve. <laughs> you got it, buddy. <laughs> I hope you can accept this apology in good faith, a term I use often but have never really understood. Why not just say sincere? Why, why make it all religious? Anyway, sorry for the making uh, sorry for not making the podcast public i'll be home soon but not soon enough and happy father's day kevin thank Elliot you christopher morgan wow beautiful I read that <laughs> i remember <laughs> <laughs> that's nice 
I didn't read the second one that he wrote. <laughs> well, the no, second I haven't one, read the second one either. He said the second one he'll read. He gotcha. did? Yeah, he said, I did a follow-up that I would like to read later in the No, episode. he said, I would like read later oh, in the episode. Oh, I would like read later. Okay, so Joe, we'll do, a fo- we'll do his At follow-up the end. later. At I the love end. it. I love it. I love yeah. it. <laughs> why you write that for us i think if any of us miss a valley cast we should write something like that a long <laughs> letter yeah there you go. <laughs> on the show. i like it a moment uh, from the not here so elliot was apologizing for not putting the podcast up on time uh the video version though right like the audio went yeah, up it was or... just the video yeah well, which the video was very special last time because there was a great moment at the end where joe glitched out and <laughs> It's very funny, actually. <laughs> I love that. That's really nice. Did uh, you guys so- hear about this uh, Terry Gillum's movie that he's making? No. Oh. Sort of. It's got like Johnny Depp in it or something. Or it's got like a crazy cast. It's got Johnny Depp playing Satan. Jeff Bridges playing God. And the uh, premise is a comedy where God decides to destroy humanity because they have ruined Earth. And the only one trying to save us is Satan because he needs people in hell. Otherwise, he won't have a job for eternity. Can I do a Jeff, my, Jeff, my Jeff Bridges impression of that? Yep. Okay. I just woke up. Because we get where I guess we don't get a little earth about something like that. No, he's not here now. No, he did not just wake up. That was him midday. That was just him. <laughs> Wide awake. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that feel like Jeff, Jeff Bridges now? Now, Bridges, yeah. Or Jeff Bridges in that. What was that movie he did with that girl, that little oh, girl? Oh, yeah. Hot, hell or At High Western, Water, is that what it that, is? True Grit. True Grit. Yeah. He couldn't even understand. <laughs> I am intrigued by that premise. That's a great premise. Right? Me too. Yeah. And great it's got premise. Adam Driver and Jason Momoa in it as well. Adam yeah. Diver? Yeah. <laughs> it's literally just a guy named Adam that loves diving. Oh, you know what I did, Kevin? This episode's audio is going to have to be my audio. You know, it's all right, man. Because I, yeah, sorry. I left the voice chat audio on, so your guys' individual audio is not usable. Because oh. my audio track will have your all your audio track oh. on it. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Just unplug it. Just okay. unplug it. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Is that the one? That's not the mic you're using, you piece Fuck of this shit. shit. <laughs> shit, we're going acoustic. That's a good bit. I like that. Uh, we're unplugged. This is a Valley Cast unplugged. Unplugged. <laughs> uh, Kevin, you like Terry Gilliam? Yeah. He's an old, older gentleman now, and uh, I, I, you I know, honestly don't know anything that he's done recently, though. Like, does, is he has he still been doing stuff? The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. See, yeah, was it one of those? Is that I want to say. I, I, no, there was something called Tideland, I think. Do you remember Tideland? Tideland. Yes. The poster had like Full a tree. Full of tide. It is. It is. <laughs> yeah, sure, Kevin. <laughs> Dude, did you guys see... Oh my God! I I I I, I saw a Living Nightmare. I saw a Living that movie nightmare. Living Nightmare. No, I saw a real Living Nightmare. Wait a I, minute. I, go ahead. He did. Uh, sorry, just to to finish this thought. Before yeah, yeah, yeah. You please, here. please. He did uh the Zero Theorem in two thousand eight thirteen. Oh, after Imaginarium, dude. It's got Christoph Waltz in it. What the fuck? What's the what are what are what's the? Oh wait a second! What's the rating on it? Um, I don't know. Hold on, hold on. Like hold on. audience rating and such. I didn't know this. What it's is it? Forty eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay. okay. Six out of ten. Okay. Because fans of director Terry Gilliam's trademark visual aesthetic will find everything they bargained for, but for the unconverted, the Zero Theorem may prove too muddled to enjoy. Hmm. 
Sounds like every Terry Gillen movie. I know, really, for real. Kevin, what happened? I didn't know that he directed 12 Monkeys. Yeah, did you like that movie? I did like that movie. Good one. Good weird movie. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that movie did time travel in a way I'd never really seen before. Yeah, I think my dad showed me it when I was like 10. And I was kind of just like, what the hell's happening? But I liked it a lot. That's probably when we saw it too, Joe. When you yeah. say it worked, little... like I was still entertained. Oh, and then he did uh, oh, the man who oh, 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 That's right. Yeah. Well, he there was a whole thing about making that movie and then not being able to make that movie, and then there was a documentary about not being able to make that movie. Yep, but then he made a movie based on not being able to make that movie. But oh. then he made that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was the movie about not being able to make the movie or the documentary is what you're talking sure about? Oh, maybe. No, maybe he finally finished it, but he finished yeah, it with Adam Driver. Yeah, that's right. And then it just happened and no one gave a shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it's crazy because if you watch that documentary about it, it's called The Man Who Killed Don Quixote. That's the documentary. Yep. It goes in depth into what it takes to make a movie and and how things can be really hard to make a movie. And uh, it's really fascinating. And you learn that what feels like a real legitimate curse on a movie is actually like happening to that movie. Because I think like even like a flood happens and like destroys their sets and shit. Damn. Something like that. Yeah, it was uh, stuck in development hell for over 29 years. Yeah, it's a good documentary. And then and then the whole movie's about like, man, I'm never gonna be it's like an unmakeable movie. I'm never gonna be able to make it. And then and you're like, man, that's so crazy. What a what a crazy story. And then he made it and no one gave a shit. <laughs> this one has a sixty five percent based on hundred and twenty six reviews with an average rating of six out of ten. Someone says Mid. <sighs> The man who killed Don Quixote may not live up to long gestating expectations, but it bears enough of director Terry Gilliam's signature creative stamp to satisfy fans. Okay. Yeah. The documentary might five. be the last good thing that he did. Was that he directed that documentary too? Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not okay, sure. guys, I have a nightmare, a living nightmare situation that happened Ugh. that I want to share with you guys. Did you hear about this? Gee, but this. Um in uh, uh oaks a place called oaks park portland it's like a portland theme park. maine portland oregon i know where you're going my daughter told me about it dude you hear about this joe <clears throat> wait is this where the i think ellie just told me about this maybe the ride the ride malfunction i think so go on there was a ride called the atmosphere f-e-a-r atmosphere that's and it's a, a great title. Love that. <laughs> great title. And it's one of those rides where everyone's in it gets buck like fastened into a circular structure type thing where your legs are dangling and it's like a harness over your shoulders. Got and then it. It, like and then it spins like upside think, yeah, down. Yeah, so this is the same thing. Yep. Yeah, it spins upside down. And I guess just a couple of days ago, it got stuck upside down. Oof. For 30, uh, 26 minutes, 26 minutes. So for 26 minutes, these horrified amusement park goers were stuck upside down. Oof. Oof. Is there like a, isn't that like a form of torture? Dude, yeah, yeah, (laughs) you can die after, after hours of how long it's hours. Yeah. And uh, it said people were vomiting and screaming and like vomiting. Yeah, like a bunch of people were vomiting because they were oh, stuck upside about that down. That ride that went upside down, yeah. And screaming and and screaming for if help. Their legs were dangling minutes. too. Like, weren't they like? So it was like they like were how would, they were resting them against gravity at a certain point because you're like ugh. your legs are dangling, so you just let them dangle like above you, kind of, you know. But dude, there's video footage of it. Yeah, and it can you like show a it? Fucking nightmare. Yeah, I'll pull it up here. Let's What's see some. Let's see some Oak nightmares. Park, Portland. Love nightmares. And the I thing love is, it. and and it's a nightmare situation because, you know, imagine being stuck on that, and then you're like, okay, we're done. Bring us down now. 
after five minutes. And then you're like, okay, 10 minutes goes by. We're done. Get us down. 15 minutes. This yeah. is, this is, I'm dying. I'm dying. Well, like, if it's the type of ride that I think it is, like, it's one thing to be stuck kind of on a roller coaster. Maybe they can get you off somehow. Like, this thing is just a straight up, you're just straight up stuck in the air, dude. dude and, yeah. And the worst part about it is, is the only way to save them was to, like, somehow get the ride working again. Working again. And yeah. then they had to go on the ride again for it to stop. <laughs> I didn't know that. I know. Dude, that's insane. I know. So after being upside down for 26 minutes, then they have to ride it again. Oh, my God. And your brain God. and your body being no, reproduced be... to Ugh. that orientation. Oh. <laughs> Just close your eyes, yeah. They say the reason why it's really easy to die upside down, and you could die being upside down. It's the blood, right? Is because your heart is working harder to pump oh. it from the – to, from your feet to, to your up. head to go up yeah and so it's pumping your it's going working extra hard so you could like have a heart attack or whatever wow all right i'm gonna show you guys some video a video dude absolute nightmare shit and did it say and, how many people is it like 10 people or something on it or no more? it was like it was more i can't remember how oh it says 28 people 28 people yeah yeah. All right, we got video here. Yep. Kuru oh, rescues 28 oh. people. Oh, my God. Oh, so it's a big thing. Yeah. These are two of the – those two people were stuck on it. They look happy. They look fine. Terrified park goers trapped aboard the malfunctioning atmosphere ride at Oaks Park. Oh, my God. Parks in the country. Riders stuck for nearly 30 minutes before firefighters and park staff were able to manually override the system and safely return them to the ground. I was just like so overwhelmed and everything. I gave her like the biggest hug. Authority said one person with a pre-existing medical condition was taken yeah. to the hospital as a precaution, but otherwise reported no injuries. Just last yeah. year, our crews were down here with our high angle group and trained and drilled specifically on this ride. So they were very well versed with a pre-plan of what actions to take. The ride has been in operation since 2021, and park inspection records show no change. That place the most recent they say, that's how big this theme ago. park is, too. That's it. Yeah, it's like yeah. this little, this little it's lot. like three rides. <laughs> it's like three rides, yeah. And apparently, it's like it's all it's been there for years. It's like a staple. Tonight, relief for those who fear the outcome might see, be much different. See Damn. Like, so you're like looking straight. It's not necessarily. It didn't look like maybe upside down. Seeing what they want to oh, say. it's upside down. It's upside down. But like, is their head? Down, it looks like it's like parallel. No, no they're, they're no. sitting upside down, but her, their legs are dangling. Oh, is it the legs that threw me off? Okay. Ooh. Jesus. Okay. Ooh. No, thank you. <laughs> like absolute nightmare shit. That's like me being stuck on the dra gravitron for three hours. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, but like, imagine being upside down and then you start. <sighs> I would Panicking. have, dude, I just, I'd be like, I'm going to fucking sue these motherfuckers for everything <laughs> I have. That's all I'd be thinking is like, this is going to be trauma for my life. After you, waved, you waved everything when you walked on the premises and yeah. bought that ticket with all the I mean, I, I guess you're right, but it's, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> that is a ride malfunction that comes with potential death. Oof. Here's a question. You are stuck on a Disneyland ride in its most precarious spot. Position, yeah. For three hours. What three ride, hours? What ride are you choosing? So you're saying where would be the most ideal stuck spot to be stuck for three hours in a Disneyland ride? Yeah. And if you say something like the teacups, the most precarious version of that is that it's spinning. <laughs> it's spinning super fast. Yeah. yeah. Three right. hours. Okay. Um, but like if we're talking Splash Mountain or Pirates of the Caribbean, like, like the would that be during the drop? Well, that so would be a three the, hour drop. Well, like the worst <laughs> place to be would be stuck at the top of the drop. Yeah. I'd be fine with that. Or like in the mid like pole part of the drop. 
you're stuck like this for three hours. You're like stuck like that. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, like yeah, waiting, yeah. yeah, you're stuck in that position for three Cold, hours. It's clammy. It's not horrible. It's nothing like being stuck upside down. And then hour no, two, but three you get hours. That, hour two, you get that little feeling in your tummy, like you got poop. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And you're like, I can ignore this. And then two and a half hours, and you're like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what are they gonna get? Still me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are they gonna get? Does uh, I don't think um, Space Mountain, Space Mountain does not go upside down, right? No, uh, but the California is dark, pitch black at this angle for three hours. Yeah. <laughs> hey, dude, this is the, the, and it happens, Joe. It happens. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like people get stuck on rides all the time and for long amounts of time because sometimes they need like engineers and shit to come in and dude, you know, emergency. you know, on haunted mansion when you're going, it like turns backwards and then yeah. you tilt backwards like, a little bit. <laughs> you could either do that or like, then it turns the corner and you're right in face with the, the caretaker uh, or whatever. Yeah. The, yeah, the gra- gra- what if you just were, had to stare at him for three hours long? Just <laughs> and the music, just the organ the music. music yeah. Like, oh, damn it. You'd never like I go crazy. All those sweet smells ever again. Dude, if uh, I was uh, upside down on that fucking ride, if there's some unholy timeline where I ended up on that upside down fucking thing for 26 minutes, I'm telling you, dude, in minute 10, I'm calling Richard Ryan and I'm like, you're gonna snipe me. <laughs> You're gonna shoot me out. <laughs> You're gonna snipe me. <laughs> I want to die. Uh, dude, who are you? So I know you would be like scrolling Reddit the whole time, <laughs> I, dude. I, I I would be do. <sighs> <laughs> I uh, I would be trying to die. <laughs> By yeah, minute I 15, that. I would be actively trying to die. <laughs> I'd be like, what do I do? Do I apply more pressure into my head right now? Oh. <laughs> I just want to pass out. I'd be smacking my head. Yeah. On something. <laughs> punch me, punch me. I want to pass the fuck out and not wake up until I'm in a hospital bed. 29 minutes is a godsend because it's been much longer than other stories that we've heard. And by like hour, by the hour mark, people are going to start pissing themselves. Like, yeah, oh, dude. It, it, uh, oof. Uh, throwing up upside down too is like a whole nother dangerous. Wow. Dangerous. Oh, nose too. Ugh. Because it could go, yeah, come through your nose and it maybe choke on it even. Oof. Mm. I don't like it, man. That's I don't like thinking about it. I honestly, the puking on top of being stuck there is like literally my worst nightmare. Like everyone around me puking, and I'm just like, this is I, I'm in hell. I I'm in hell, dude. I just know what was going through their minds too, because on the rides like that, they go back, they go forth, they go back, they get higher, and then they were just one, waiting. They go around and around, and then at some point. They do the slow play, so they go, Whoa, and then they purposefully do it slow and give you a little pause. Yeah. And then go. So these people yeah. are like, it's okay, here we go. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> How many seconds? Whoa, this is crazy. <laughs> whoa. 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 Uh, uh. <laughs> How long does it take, Joe, for you to be like, oh, shit. <laughs> I bet you it was a good 10 seconds before people were like, oh. definitely. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, no. And you can hear them screaming, get us down, get us down, help us. They see the engineer in the purple shirt at the bottom. He's, like, running away with his wrench. <laughs> well, and then they, like, they close the park down, like, minute 10 or something. They closed the whole park down and evacuated the park. And, like, so that, you know. The uh, firefighters and stuff could get in. Couldn't they have, like, done a big ladder? I don't know, man. That's it's like, getting, it's, all still, those... it's still the getting them out from being upside yeah, down. Yeah. Unfastening that they would be too dangerous. Yeah, I guess the fastening out. of the things are locked in there. And, Damn. If that, and if that thing gave out, that's like death. You'd fall from that. However yeah. tall that is. They did say that they practiced that scenario. So I'm interested to know how they do it. They probably would go up. They would have to like fasten them with some safety lines yeah. care about, and open them up safely get them on the ladder Dude, imagine that imagine they're like okay you're gonna trust us we're gonna un hinge you from this thing and then you're gonna just, just we're hooked, gonna be hooked up we're gonna get you and then you, you know could you imagine having to go from upside down for over 25 minutes to then having to like 
up in the air, like fucking 350 feet in the air or however. Um, How many feet in the air is that? A lot. Imagine, imagine you see the fire truck come, right? You're like, okay, good, fine. We're going to be rescued. You see this big ladder. ladder. I'm like, no oh. fucking way. And then this like guy starts like <laughs> lumbering his way up, and he gets up to you guys. And he's like, don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. We're going to get you down. And they're like, yay. And he's like, so here's what we're going to do. One at a time, we are going to release you. Jesus. We're going to go fall down to our safety airbag. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and what if while he's talking, the ride starts moving? Oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> and with the big ladder there, it just oh, smashes into it. Uh, and the ladder, the ladder and the fire truck are going around. It's it looks on. And then it's, yeah, it's just like it, it gets un uh, like stationary, and then the bottom of the whole ride starts rolling as well. <laughs> it breaks off We're and then starts rolling around, <laughs> <laughs> smashing buildings and shit. Dude, I, uh, honestly, like what whatever I have to do in my life for me to never be in yeah. that position is how I'm going to live my life for the rest of my fucking life. Look, I know the, chance unlocked. Unlocked. the chances are slim, but maybe one of those poor souls listens to this podcast or somebody's friend. I'm so sorry. Right. One, sorry, but two, come on the podcast and talk about the experience. Oh my God. Yeah. Please. Dude, that's, an, that's a great idea, Joe. Please. We would love to laugh at you. I um, mean, We'd love, to hear. <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to look to be like, you know, when we look, when you look at a car accident off the road, we want to like be thankful it wasn't us. Yes, but I de definitely would love to hear like what's going through your minds because the clip that that, that news organization showed us. Made it looked great. They were like, that looked great. Yeah, I know. Isn't that crazy? They were like, and then we got rescued and I was so happy, like big smiles. <laughs> but I saw See, a video was, on TikTok where someone said it. Happened? Oh, go ahead. What would have happened if, like, you accidentally got on that ride after last night's movie Wana, and you were oh, that? Oh, jeez. On the ride. <laughs> I think I'd be like, "This is some cosmic mm. force telling me to stop smoking <laughs> weed and stop having weed." <laughs> <laughs> this is my punishment for being high all the time. Woo. Okay, Joe, you want to read that follow-up? Let's finish it off. Elliot, and then we'll close it out. Following up right now. <clears throat> second one, second big one. Here we go. To my esteemed colleagues and every listen single listener of the Valley Cast. The other night I went to a bar attached to this historic hotel, the second built by Mr. Hilton. While the place was empty, there was a DJ set up playing some kind of EDM. Beside him was a frail person. I could not tell... What, if any gender, wearing sunglasses and doing minimal but consistent dance moves? There was no one there besides me, the DJ, and that tiny person we'll just call Dobby. <laughs> this moment <laughs> stayed with me for a long time until I woke up this morning with the realization that Albuquerque is an amazing place. Therefore, I would like to rescind my previous assertion that th this town is a hellhole. I have also canceled my flight and will not be returning to Los Angeles. <laughs> I, I am joining the DJ and Dobby, and we are starting a group called Funtanil. <laughs> Funtanil. I apologize for misrepresenting my new home. I have informed my wife that I have left her, and I will not be returning to the Valley Cast because <laughs> Funtanil already has two gigs lined up. We're performing yes. at the Albuquerque Holiday Inn, third hotel built by Mr. Hilton, and we already have a Christmas residency in the parking lot of the CVS. We are we are going to rob. <laughs> Parentheses. They can't stop. They can't stop you, so you can take whatever you want. Is what Dobby said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your understanding, Elliot Christopher Morgan. That's so Beautiful. Dobby. That's so Dobby of him. That's very Dobby coded. <laughs> it is very Dobby coded. Uh, Wait, one last thing before we go. We're filming this on Father's Day, so I'd like to give a shout out to my dad, who occasionally listens, listens to this slop. And uh, you know what, Dad? I love you. Thank you for all the support over the years. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, um teacher of life to me and i i love you to death and i appreciate uh all of our time together and i hope you have a happy father's day but every other day after that you're on your own dude <laughs> yeah that's how it works and happy father's day to you joe 
Yeah. Thanks, man. What are you doing today, Joe? Any plans? Oh, they do the thing where they sleep forever, but then they have a secret that they want to show me, and then they'll show it. Are they going to make the you best. food and stuff today? They're going to baby pamper you? They fucking better. They goddamn better. <laughs> Out of all the goddamn times of the day where you're out there getting your knuckles bloody, making tortillas. <laughs> <laughs> and happy Father's Day to you, Kevin. Thank you, dude. I got to make sure oh, I didn't kill can. my daughter. You don't kill those bunnies, brother. Yeah. And yeah. also, I love that video Elliot po- uh, posted along with that. They're, they're, that it guy, showed that, Dobby. That DJ just has like a little hype man. Is that who that yeah, is? Yeah, it looks like it, dude. Did you see it, Joe? Oh, yeah. Let's see it again, Kev. There's That's Dobby. Just, What's in that backpack? Dobby's saying That's true. What is in that backpack? Hey. Also, this here <laughs> is like their projection, I think. Or yeah, something. Yeah. Of what though? Just colors, I, dude. It's like a visualizer. Yeah. All right. Well, happy holidays to everybody. Happy Father's Day to everyone who celebrates. Happy Father's Day to all the dads. Happy Independence Day. Happy Juneteenth. Happy Father's oh, Day to all okay. the good dads out there. Fuck all the bad ones. <sighs> Dobby's like, drop the beat. (laughs) Drop the beat. Drop the beat. Drop the beat, please. How's the time? No, not yet. He's watching the boys. You watching the boys? Yeah, dude. I I love that they gave us a lot of episodes, but I hate that they didn't give them all. I know, but I'm. Is there some things I'm having trouble with? We'll we'll wait till some people watch more, and then we'll talk about it. Okay. 